being here and here we go. So welcome to the National Parks Adventure Crossing America. This is episode number four at the Everglades National Park. We are so glad that you're here. This is a partnership that is made possible by the National Park Foundation. They partner with us to help us go around the country and film in national parks and bring these um, adventures to you in your school and in your home. Crossing America uh, consists of a couple of We have geography, science, stories, and STEM. Now, if you've been with us before, you know that we're doing scrapbooks. So we're gonna ask that you have some paper and pencil near you so that you can take some notes during this. And that at the end of the program today, we will show you what a scrapbook page looks like. And we want you to be able to share those with us so that you can earn a Crossing America stamp to put on your scrapbook. So our scrapbook is going to include geography, where the park is, the science behind the park, some of the stories, and then we're going to give you a STEM challenge. We hope that most of you have been able to watch the virtual experience that we filmed at Everglades in December. If not, we'll make sure that you get the link to that. So today's geography, a lot of you are from Florida, so this is going to be no new news to you, but we are in Florida. We were in Florida on Monday also, also at Biscayne National Park. So we are down at the tip of Florida or southern Florida. So if you look to the left-hand side of your screen, you're going to see the different counties. So we are um, down in the Miami-Dade area, and it kind of scrolls over a little bit, and we'll talk about that. Um, we're going to start off with an activity called Silent Scenes. So you need your paper and pencil ready. And I want you to make three columns on your paper. The first column says the word C. The second column will have the word no, K-N-O-W. And the third column will have the word wonder. Now, as we're watching this silent video, I want you to keep your eyes on the screen but at the same time, I want you putting notes under these three columns. We're going to start with the word C first. It's not going to be hard. You can do this. So here we go. So keep your eyes on the screen. So these are going to be about what do you see? So you can talk about colors. You can talk about the animals that you see. You can talk about what the animal is in. So what do, you, what do you see here? You can talk about the water. Now we're gonna go to what do you know? What creature is this? For those of you in South Florida, this is something you probably see all the time. What do you know? This is something else you're going to find at the Everglades. What do you see happening here? What do you, what do you know that's happening? Obviously, there's some type of um, wind blowing that. And then the last scene is what do you wonder? Do you have a wonder of maybe what that sounds like, that little babbling or white water there? And we'll have one more little video that's gonna ask you again, what do you wonder? What are those green things? All right, so now that you've seen a few images or videos from the National Park, the Everglades National Park, we're actually going to let you talk with Ranger Yvette. So let's come back to me for just a moment. We spent uh, a great day with Ranger Yvette at the Everglades National Park in December. It was absolutely beautiful, and she really shared a lot of things that I had never known about the National Park. So keep your sheet there. 
and you're going to listen to Ranger Yvette talk. And if you can add anything to your see, know, or wonder column, please do that. And then we'll give us a little bit of time to ask some questions. So Ranger Yvette, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to let you take over and um, share your screen. Hello, boys and girls. I am so excited to come into your classroom today. Thank you for welcoming us in and learning about Everglades National Park. So let's go ahead and get started. I see lots of waving hands. Hello to my boys and girls. Awesome. I'm so excited to see all these smiling faces. Give me a thumbs up when you can see my screen so I can make sure that it's coming across. Awesome. You guys are the best. So Everglades National Park is the first national park to be set aside for living things, for life, which is crazy because we take life for granted every single day, right? We wake up, we drink our water, we do our thing, but how are we, me and you, connected to this place called Everglades National Park, especially if you live right here in South Florida? Well, let's talk about some of the residents of this place. You are already looking at probably the most popular resident of Everglades so far, and that is the American alligator. Oh man, people come from all over the world to see American alligators, but Everglades National Park is also known for our birds. And this world is a great blue parrot. Can you believe this bird feet tall and a foot? wingspan. That means from one end of the twings to the other six feet. Insane. These tiny birds are actually called purple gallinules, and their colors are just extravagant. They have purples and greens and blues and a candy corn beak. They are equipped with really large to help them walk on top of lily pads. Make sure you're muted. Also, boys and girls, my favorite bird because it's pink. And honestly, Ranger that loves pink. This is the rosy spoonbill. Beautiful touch feeder. It will walk or wade in the water looking for food and it moves that spoon-like bill. Of course, Everglades National Park has many reptiles, and although many of us are afraid of snakes, snakes play a very important role in making sure to keep the ecosystem in balance. And things like turtles, which are pretty amazing, and this one with its, with its funny little nose is even cuter because of that funny little nose. This is an aquatic turtle called a Florida softshell turtle. Things like insects and butterflies also play such an important role. Funny looking birds like wood storks are indicators. They tell us if the ecosystem is healthy, which is so important. And of course, our American eagle or a bald eagle. Everglades is home to that as well. If we look at endangered species, the American crocodile, the only place in the world where there's American alligators and American crocodile, the Florida panther. Unfortunately, they are very, very endangered as a result of not enough space to live. And then we have the West Indian manatee, a tropical species that calls Everglades National Park home. And then this very serious looking bird. This is the Florida snail kite. Now this animal is endangered because it has a very specific diet. So if you only eat one thing and that thing goes away, well, needless to say, it can get complicated. Like I said, the first national park to be set aside for biological diversity. But let's talk briefly about the water in Everglades National Park. Everglades National Park has so much life that if it didn't have water, I don't think we would be able to sustain so much life. Now, originally, the water for Everglades National Park or the historic Everglades water flow 
started all the way up where Mickey Mouse lives in Orlando. That's very far from, from South Florida. If you're not from South Florida, it takes us about four hours to drive. It's about 200 miles north of Everglades National Park. So that water flow would flow all the, across South Florida, that huge lake right in the center, Lake Okeechobee, it would fill up and it would spill over. Well, today in our second picture, the current flow, we change that and we change that because South Floridians moved to South Florida and there was too much water. It was too swampy. It was too difficult to build our homes. However, very quickly we realized that changing that water flow was detrimental to the Florida Everglades. Now today, since the year 2000, we've been working on a restored water flow. And I want you to understand, we're never going to have the historic flow again. There are too many people living in South Florida, but what we're working on is making sure to get the water longer. So that, I'm gonna to refer to that as an increased hydro period. A hydro period is how long the water is sitting on the landscape. We want that water on Everglades National Park because guess what? Here comes our connection. That water that sits on the park filters into the Biscayne Aquifer, and that is where you and I get our fresh water from. If you brushed your teeth this morning, if you um, perhaps washed your hair or took a shower or had some breakfast, you drank the water that an alligator swam in. I know it sounds crazy, but trust me, it's true. So this water business is pretty important. All right, I hope you enjoyed that and a glimpse into Everglades National Park. Let's turn it back over. Thank you so much, Ranger and Vet. Now, students, we disabled the chat for just a few minutes because we had too many people just saying hey to each other. And I love that you want to say hey, but I do want us to use the chat. So if you promise me that we'll use it just for our learning today, I'm going to ask Ms. Schwanekamp to turn it back on. And what I would like for you to do is I would like for you to list one of the animals that you saw in Ranger Yvette's presentation. So she's going to turn that back on right now, and she's going to ask you to only use the chat to tell us about an animal that you saw in the um, presentation. I will tell you something that I absolutely love, and that is the manatees. And I noticed that when Ranger Yvette shared the manatees, that someone immediately right after that put the words sea cow. And until last month, I didn't realize that that was another name for it. So I thought that was very interesting. So we're listing the manatees, snakes, uh, soft shell turtles, the, the Carolina Panthers, excuse me, not the Carolina Panthers. That's a football team where I live. I must be getting a little silly here. The Florida Panthers. Um, yeah, so many animals there. And if you listen very carefully, you heard her talk about how this park was set apart uh, because it had so much diversity in it. So on your paper, on your notes, I want you to list at least two of the animals that you saw so that when you go back to create your scrapbook, you can look for pictures, you can draw your own pictures and then come up with ideas to share those animals in your scrapbook. So I'm gonna ask that you stop chatting for just a moment and let's go ahead and, and go to the next part of our event, which is gonna be stories. So we know that every park has a story. We know that every person has a story to tell and everyone is a writer. And if we tell these stories now, we will, they will be remembered in the future. But if we don't tell the stories or write the stories down, we won't know what has happened in the past. So let me tell you a few stories from the Everglades National Park. First of all, we have these two tribes of Indians that lived in the Everglades as early as the 18th century. Now, if you're from uh, Florida, then you study this. This is part of your fourth grade history that you talk about a lot. And there were many different tribes 
um, that lived in Florida, but these are two that lived in the Everglades. Another interesting thing that I found is before the Everglades was established, many people actually lived there and they were called gladesmen. So these were men that learned how to, to live off the land. They were able to hunt for their food. They camped, they survived. They knew how important the Everglades were before anyone decided to make them a national park. And then we have one of my favorite stories, and this is about the Civilian Conservation Corps or the CCC. Now, this was a group of men that worked around the country. Um, President uh, Roosevelt came up with this idea called the New Deal. And it was a bunch of ideas about how to make our country more prosperous or to take care of each other. So the CCC, was a program that helped young men between the ages of 18 and 25 who didn't have a job to come together to work. And they got paid $30 a month. They were able to stay at the park that they were working at. And $25 a month went back to take care of their families. Now, I know that you're thinking, Ugh, that's a lot of uh, not a lot of money, but back in the day, that was a lot of money. The CCC is no longer um, in effect the way it was, but there may be a chance that it comes back again. So those are some stories from the Everglades. And then probably a story that you have heard of um, is about Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. So she was this uh, lady that graduated with straight A's. She went to a very prestigious college and she was fighting for things like racial justice and conservation long before any of this was even a big deal in our world. And she was very um, concerned about the water and the wetlands and she didn't want any of that destroyed. So those are four stories that are part of the Everglades story. So on your scrapbook right now or on your paper, I want you to answer these questions in just short answers. First of all, do you have any connections to Florida? Well, obviously all of you do that live in Florida. So you may have lived there your entire life or you may have just arrived in Florida in the last few years. So think about your connections to Florida and have you ever visited the Everglades before, the Everglades National Park? That may be some place that you have visited. Now, I know that if you live in the Miami-Dade area, that a lot of you do visit. In fact, something Ranger Yvette didn't tell you today, but she tells us on the video, is that she went to the Everglades National Park when she was a sixth grader, I believe. And then she became a teacher in um, the school system and brought her kids. And now she's come full circle because now she works in the park and she works with teachers and students. I want you to go home and ask your family, did any of your great, great uh, grandparents work in the Civilian Conservation Corps? If you've lived there your entire life, that is probably a really good connection for you. They may have worked there, and if they did, they helped make Everglades what it is today. And the last question is, do you care about the environment? Does it bother you when people are mean to animals? Does it bother you when you see people throwing trash on the ground? If any of those questions are yes, then that means that you have a heart for saving the environment. So that's what we're gonna ask you to do today. So we're gonna connect all of our learning today to goal number six, clean water. As we learned from Ranger Yvette, the Everglades are extremely important to the water source for the Miami-Dade area. So your task is to create some type of business plan to help the Everglades National Park protect the South Florida ecosystem because they have to protect the animals and they also have to make sure that they can get the water that's needed for their region. Now, you could create a water filter 
when we were with Ranger Yvette, she talked about how we need water, but we also need it to be clean water. Like we don't want to drink the, the dirty water. You may have an idea about how the water can be um, sourced to get to your home. Now, this is not going to be one of those very simple STEM challenges that we really do. This is going to cause some research to happen. So you're going to have to research how the water is getting to you now, um, where it goes. And there's three different, I think, areas it kind of goes through. Reach out to the experts. Um, Ranger Yvette is an expert about the Everglades, but she can also point you into the direction of other people that work in Everglades National Park that may be water conservationists. They could work in the areas of just making sure the water's getting to the right places. So we want you to think about how you're going to share your idea. So let's come back to me for just a moment. I'm gonna share a few things that I thought about. So I have some recyclable materials here. And I was thinking, Ranger Yvette, about the clean water piece, because obviously we want to have clean water. So could it be that I create some type of prototype that helps direct the water right before it gets to us with some type of filter? Or could I reach out to an expert to see, to learn more about this water um, and how it moves and how it gets to us and come up with a business plan that you possibly could present to your superintendent at the Everglades. Now, kids, we know that you guys have the best ideas. So especially for those of you that live in South Florida, how are you gonna make sure that the water that is in the Everglades National Park gets to you safely, um, affordably, and, and it gets to you clean? So teachers, this is the time we're going to let our students share their ideas, okay? So kids, I'm going to trust you that we're going to, um, if you have an idea of how you can help Ranger Yvette get water to your home safely um, and clean, we're going to ask you to raise your hand on Zoom. So at the bottom of your screen, you have this little hand that you can push and raise. And when you do, my friend, uh, Ms. Schwanekamp, is going to call on you and ask you to share. And I'm going to help you out, Ms. Schwanekamp, because I see one very quickly. So if I mispronounce your name, I totally apologize. And I will make sure that I try to say it uh, good the next time, but Nanthalia Requise, if, if that's you, can you unmute and tell me what you think about how we can solve the water problem? Um, maybe like we could like put like filters that we put like on fish's tanks, but like for cleaning water. Okay, and how do you think you would build that? If you're going to use like recyclable materials to build your prototype, what could you use to uh, build that? Um, we could use like little tiny like nets with little holes and then absolutely yeah so then, I like that you can keep talking anything else So I think that's good using nets with small holes because obviously we don't want to catch the fish, right? We want to make sure that we're being safe with the animals. Um, Monica, can you unmute? <coughs> um, I think we can do like a machine that gets the trash and if it's recyclable to put it in a can and if it can be donated to be donated. But if some fish gets trapped on it, it, it can have like a solution or something. Monica, I love that you solved two problems there. You talked about how we could collect and clean the water, but you also talked about if we collect things that could be donated or repurposed or reused. Um, that makes a lot of sense to me because we don't want to do something well to the detriment of making something else worse. So you solved two problems there. Thank you so much for sharing that. 
Um, Manon, M-A-N-A-N. -A -N. Me? Yes. So like, mine is like, we could have these tanks which like spin the water, like they could be made of your usual things. They could like, like, like they could have, like spin around and like take out all the dust and like the dust that settles, it could be used to like, we like dig up a lot of dirt to like build like artificial islands. So instead of doing that, the dirt we've separated from that, the water, we could use that. On and then you are a genius. Of course we wanna, if we, if we include any dirt or dust that comes with our, the recycling of that water, we could absolutely move that to create artificial islands or artificial reefs. So again, you're solving two problems with one prototype. Thank you so much. And, and thank you to your teacher um, because I think you're learning so much in school and I really appreciate that. Thank you. All right, our next hand up is um, Geronimo. I don't see your face, but I see your name and your hand up. If you want to unmute, you can share. So like I was thinking that like like put a fishing net in the ocean but make it with bigger holes so you can catch like big you know, like like a ton of garbage or like trash in the water in the ocean. So that would help many national parks also. There's a lot of parks that struggle with that um, marine debris. So that would be very helpful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Maria Carla. You're welcome. You're, you're welcome. Thank you. Maria Carla, do you want to unmute? Did you call on us? Yes, Maria Carla. Yes. Yes. Well, this is this is Gabriel. Hi, Gabriel. Hi. So, uh, put like a float in the middle of the ocean, and like it, it has a camera on the float, and like it senses all the trash. So the trash, or, so like there's these arms on the float and the hands are on the arms so they grab all the trash in the middle of I, the love that. I love that and I love the technology that you're using cameras and sensors um, you're learning a lot about physical science there so I love the idea and don't lose your drawing because I want you to share that with me a little bit later thank you so go add to your drawing Lori Zaziski Hey, she's coming. <laughs> this is Barbara. Hi, Barbara. So I think we should um, we I think we should build canals and put different filters in it from big to like very little. So any dirt and trash that goes through the water and goes through the canals can get filtered. That makes a lot of sense that you want to make sure that you're keeping out the things you don't want to drink, but you're making sure that the things you do want to drink get through. Barbara, I like that idea. I can't wait to see your drawing. Yeah. Miss, Miss Schenhoster. And again, I apologize if I'm not doing well with those names. You, you pronounced it correctly. But what my idea was is that we would get like this too, right? It's like my dad. So like my dad, he has this place and like his fridge was like this little tube that filters the water. So what I was thinking is we could have a tube with like a little tiny hole in the middle, like a wall. And that hole gets the water to go through that hole and eliminates all the dirty stuff. And also to help with the recycling problem, we could have little like bins on the side that basically, so it would filter out. So all, it's like once it hits the wall, once the garbage hits the wall, that all like the trash would fall into these holes where then there'd be bins down there and they'd all go into like this bin where then there'd be workers right there to check if it's recyclable 
like for something you can recycle or something you can just throw away. So three things I like about that. One, you're solving two problems. So that's one and two. And I love your enthusiasm. If Ranger Yvette likes this idea and shares it with the Rangers, Ranger Yvette, I think you're going to need to ask him to come and share the idea because he has that voice that might, that might sell it, sort of like a Shark Tank thing. Thank you so much. You're, you're welcome. So the next hand I see is Diem Nagu, I'm sorry, Nagu, just Diem. How about that? And I apologize again for the last Hi. Hello, Ms. Jones. So I Hello, love, how are you? He's going to come up and give the idea. Come on, come on, OC. Okay, we are from Miami, Florida, so we are very happy to join you. Honey, the camera, go get in front of the camera. Um, one way I think um, is like maybe there can be like two pipes, one pipe um, like takes away all the dirty stuff from like the water and the other one transports the water to um, people's um, like water source. And you said using limestones also. And using limestone. So can you tell me a little bit about why we would use limestone? It's a, as a filter. As a filter. Nice, I like that. Thank you. Thank you so much Thank for sharing you. that. Um, Valentin Prieto. Valentino Prieto. Hello. Uh, my idea was that we can get like this robot that can like has a bucket on its back so it can like pick up trash and filter the water at the same time. But if like a fish could get trapped in, like it doesn't really get trapped in because it would be a small hole. But then like it can expand whenever it wants. Like if it tenses a big piece of trash, it, it picks it up. And if like there's a really... Like if there's a big wave coming, it can also like become bigger. So it can like, you know, pick up the trash and out the like filter more water. I like the idea of being expandable. Did you know that NASA also uses that same concept when they send things out into space to collect trash? They have things that are small when they send them out and then they expand. Um, we I have so know. many hands up right now i'm going to try to keep uh doing it but thank you so much for that that suggestion great idea um i'm going to sort of keep going down the list if we can i'm hoping that we get everybody um dave jean baptiste i'll come back oh there we are go ahead good afternoon we have two students that had a question. Yes. All right, Giovanni, go first. We could like put a border in the water that separates the good water and the fish from the bad water with the trash in it. So then we put a, a water filter in the bad water and then all the water is good. So then we take out the border and the trash. So there's all good water in the ocean. I like that. And I, I can't wait to see the drawing for that. Was there one more person behind you? All right, London. I think you can put like a net in the water and get all the dirty stuff outside the water and then put a clean filter in it and make the clean filter get all of the dirt and different things out. And then once it's out, you can have fresh water. Again, another great idea. And I hope everyone's listening to these because you can add this to your scrapbook. I'm going to have time for just a few more. Um, this screen says Biscayne National Park on it. I'm not sure who that is, but your screen name says Biscayne National Park. We already shared. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Chris Rodriguez. So we can have like a net that has like no holes so then like fish can go around it and and like so they don't get trapped in the holes. I like that. Thank you so much. And I'm hearing a lot of work um, or ideas from people that includes nets. Um, Alfredo Suarez. Um. So we could have a place like a like a dock. 
So we can have um like a little dog that has like a tube. And they also has like a water bottle. So you, so you grab some water, put it into the tube, it filters it, and then it takes it to a place somewhere where they could give it to people in need. I like that. And I love that you're, you're adding a compassion piece to that, to give it to someone in need. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Hayden? I'm saying that we can like add like nets to the side of boat. So when they like drive in the ocean, they can pick up trash on their way to. Thank you. And I like the idea and, of adding it to a boat. Yeah, and I'm saying, and it can be like a, oh, never mind. All right, great idea. Thank you so much. Carlos Herrera. All right, thank you. We have a, a student who is uh, learning English. So she told me the idea in Spanish and she's going to try to tell you in English what it is, okay? Oh, I love this. Thank okay, you so, so much. Over here. She's going to come from the camera. But thank you. Her name is Wendy, by the way. Do you see her? Yes. Okay. I'm okay. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, Wendy, go ahead, get closer so she can hear you, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do it now. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. We can have the water using a well. Once the water is pumped, it will go through pipes that are used as a filter to clean it before it's distributed. Distributed. Distributed to the houses or people. This is my drawing. My drawing. Can you see? Wait, go, go, go closer to the camera. Hold on. If you can see yourself, okay? Can you see her drawing pretty well? Let me see if you can. Can you push it just a little closer? A little closer, Wendy. Maserka, maserka. Yes, and Wendy, congratulations on your English. That was very nice. And thank you for sharing that and being brave to do that. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Okay. Oscar. Oscar Panatoras. Oscar, can you turn on your microphone? It is on. Oscar, you got frozen there. Yeah, is that um, we use a robot that's what? My idea, my idea is um. I think my I lost you. All right, Oscar, we're going to come back to you in just a moment. If you'll mute your microphone, we're going to do one more because I don't have a lot of time left, but I'm going to ask for Miss Drysdale's fourth grade class. You can share and don't worry, kids. I'm still going to get your ideas, but it's going to um, be in a different form. So Miss Drysdale's fourth grade. Michael, Michael. Um, so I think we could um, put um, a tube, like a tube, like a concrete tube with a gate on it. And it would let it would let in all the clean water and take out all the trash. And the trash that was stuck, we could send like a boat out once a month and clean the filter. Very nice. Students, I am overwhelmed with your ideas today. I don't believe we've ever had this many ideas and we still have 15 hands up. But unfortunately, we're going to run out of time, but I'm still going to hear your idea in another way. So let's go back to the screen for just a moment. Here's how you're going to share your next big idea with us. Teachers, I have set up a Padlet and Ms. Shawana Camp's going to put that into the chat window right now. And this is where you're going to be able to share your students' ideas. The thing that we'll work on is you can share their, their photos of their designs. You can have them write out what they would like to um, have us know about their product. They could do a video if you want to. If you add this to the Padlet, we're going to share this with the National Park Foundation, the Everglades National Park, and the National Park Service. So make sure that we have permission to share these ideas with those that make big decisions in our country about the national parks. Ranger Yvette 
is probably very excited right now because she has all of these ideas that she wants to see and take back to um, her park so that they can make things happen because, you know, us adults, we're okay, but you kids, you're the ones that have these amazing, amazing um, ideas and we want to be able to use them. Teachers, there's one thing I do want to give your kids as an extension of this, and I will send you this link. But we know that the National Parks, the Everglades National Parks has nine different ecosystems. So if you want to continue the learning, we ask that your kids study these nine ecosystems and put together either a short video or they could put together a drawing or a skit and share those with us. We also have a couple of books that we would encourage you to read. One is Marjorie Saves the Everglades, which is from um, the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas um, story. And also, if you ever want to bring an alligator to school, I think would be a great story to share with your kids. In February, we have two National Park events that we want to invite you to. So teachers, if you want to write these down and because you've already registered for our Crossing America events, you'll get an email about this. But on February 23rd, which should say 23rd and not 23rd, sorry about that, we're going to be at the Maggie L. Walker National Historic Site in Richmond, Virginia. And on the 24th, we're going to be at the Assateague Island National Seashore with the wild horses. So we hope that you will join us there. Again, this is a book I would encourage you to read. I know that it is on Epic, so you can use that in your classroom. I want to thank you so much for joining us today. I would say that, and Ms. Schwanekamp, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we've had the most ideas today out of any of the National Park events that we've had. Ranger Yvette, you are a rock star. Thank you so much for all that you do with these students in the Miami-Dade area and around the country now because you are going to go viral on YouTube. We thank you to the National Park Foundation for making all of this happen. So on behalf of myself, Dr. Drizzle, and Marvin and Huck, our mascots, Expeditions and Education, Everglades National Park and the National Park Foundation, we thank you very much for all you've done. I'm going to ask you, if you don't mind, if you will turn your cameras on and give us a big wave so we can have a copy of all your beautiful faces so that I can put it in my scrapbook so that I can know who was here. So a big wave. I'm going to take a quick picture of everybody smiling. We're going to have to go to a third page because we have that many people here. You look wonderful.